Welcome to the second part uh, of the tutorial of, of uh, custom uh, bootloader design. So, so last time we covered um, a general concept of, of designing a custom bootloader. Then we configured UART with, with DMA to receive uh, data packets with, with, a, with a varying size. And also we, uh, the most important thing is that we also studied SRC cyclic redundancy uh, check to make sure that our data is not corrupted. Uh, in addition, I introduced a Python script to compute the SRC and to send data uh, through the serial port. So next thing, we will cover the flash memory and other things. So, uh, so by the end of this video, we will be able to design a custom uh, bootloader. So let's get started and let's move on and, and we will start this tutorial, this video from, from the flash memory. Um, so as we discussed before, uh, flash memory is a place where our application is stored. Uh, first, we can compile the project and, and then uh, we will have this ELF or binary file. And when we press this uh, debug button, this uh, binary file will be transferred to the uh, to the flash memory, and and then um, the CPU will will start executing data using the instruction stored in this flash memory. But in our case, uh, instead of sending the binary file through this IDE, for example, through uh, through a debugging process, we want to send the binary file through the Python script through uh, different interfaces. So it means that we have to update the flash memory. So we receive the data through UART communication and we have to store this data within the flash memory of the microcontroller. So for that purpose, I'm going to present some uh, functions um, I wrote, so within the project, uh, we have this uh, flash control um, that C uh, source file. So first thing I want to show this function, which is necessary to erase the bank. So what if you ask what uh, bank is, if you go back to this picture. So as you see, we have the flash memory, it's divided into pages. But the most important thing is that it's divided into two banks. So we have bank one and bank two. So this function allows us to erase one of one of that banks. Um, so so here we have uh, this uh, struct flash erase structured definition, and here we just need to define all of these members, uh, all the members of the struct. So type erase, uh, type erase pages, and we have how many pages? If you go back to this picture, we have 256 pages per, per bank. And um, so that's why we have 256. This is the onset page from, pay, from which page we want to erase. And then we have this uh, bank, which is the macro. I will, I will uh, present this uh, macro slide later. And then uh, uh, we just call this function to erase the bank. And, and since we're erasing from, from starting from this page, like starting from page 256, you, you might think that we always erase bank two, but actually we can, uh, we can erase bank two or bank one, even if we start uh, from this page. And I will explain that later why we can we can achieve that. But right now, just uh, make sure that you understand the rest of the part of this function. And I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, next, we have this uh, function store flash memory. So as I said, um, later we will send the binary file through our Python script using the serial port, using the UART. And when, it when the microcontroller receives that binary file, it has to store it within the flash memory. So for that purpose, we will use this function. So here we have three arguments. First is the memory address. So this is the uh, flash memory address, so where we want to store it. The second argument is 
of course data pointer and the last segment is the number of bytes we want to send so to store within the flash memory we use this function hal flash program and and the and the when when sending data in every iteration we don't just send them one byte instead of we say we send double word in other words eight bytes so i increment uh pointer by eight bytes in every iteration um, but after this while loop we might have some leftovers for example if you're sending let's say 68 bytes through this while loop we will send 64 bytes then we have we will end up with uh, with four bytes and and for that purpose i and design i added this if statement okay so i guess everything is uh pretty uh straight uh forward uh, next we will switch to the um to the boot configuration aliasing and dual bank boot so before moving to the next part of the tutorial I want to quickly mention that I have a, a GitHub um, organization, Step School. So here I have 18 repositories that contain all the projects I've worked so far, uh, including the dual boot uh, bootloader design. So all these uh, source code, all these uh, PDF materials, everything is available within this uh, GitHub organization. And you can get access to it by becoming a VIP member on, on my Patreon page. So for very small amount of uh, fee, you have access to huge uh, amount of materials. So you can clone all these projects and get access to all these materials. And of course, I will use this fee to create, to make new interesting uh, and, and more useful uh, projects for you guys. Okay, after these small ads, let's go back to our project, our tutorial. So, um, let's talk about boot configuration. Um, so, I took this um, um, screenshot from the reference manual of the SM32 uh, Alpha microcontrollers, page uh, 91. So, here we have boot 1 and boot 0, and one of them actually our external pin of the microcontroller. So by manipulating these pins, these bits, uh, we can um, um, choose uh, different boot modes. So we can use a main flash memory, or we can use system memory or embedded SRAM. So by default, of course, we have main flash memory. So when we power on the microcontroller, by default, it will start executing um, the application within the flash memory but but of course we have other options and and of course I, we are not going to um, uh, we are not going to uh, change the boot mode uh, what i what why i'm uh, presenting it uh, because i want to present this aliasing um, technical term it's very important to understand the, this uh, ter term so um, in our microcontrollers, when when you uh, boot, when you uh, power on the microcontroller, what it does, it goes to this address, zero zero zero. Okay. Uh, it, from that, it takes the stack up pointer, and in, and then it starts executing the code from from starting from this address, zero 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 four. Um, and even if you don't understand uh, fully what I am saying, um, I just want to say that the the microcontroller, the, the CPU, always starts from the same address, from zero address. But uh, as you see, we can change the boot mode. Like we can run the applications from different memory units with the, with different addresses. So how is that possible? This is possible thanks to aliasing. And I, I did a small typo here, not aliasing, it should be aliasing like this. So aliasing basically means uh, mapping address, this zero address, to the flash memory, to SRAM or other locations of the memory. 
So the CPU will access to these zero address, but actually it is uh, um, getting instructions, fetching the instructions from different uh, address. And if you go back to the flash memory um, table, so here, as you see, it starts from this address, not from 00. zero. So what it means is that when you power on the microcontroller by default, this address is aliased to address zero. Okay, hopefully this idea is clear, clear for you. So aliasing is basically means mapping of the, of the memory uh, addresses. Um, next, uh, I want to show this quote. So let me close this. Uh, so this quote is really, really important for us. So I took it from the reference manual again, page 91. So let's read it together. So what it says, when booting from the main flash memory, which is the default configuration, the application software can either boot from bank one or two. By default, boot from bank one is selected. To select boot from flash memory bank two, set this BFB bit in the user option bytes. When this bit is set and the boot pins are in the boot uh, from main flash memory configuration, the device boots from the system memory and the bootloader jumps to execute the user application programmed in flash memory 2, bank 2. The system memory remains aliased to the boot memory space 0. So, uh, this is a really important thing. What these words basically mean, let's go back to our flash uh, memory table. What it basically means is that we have this BFB2 pin a bit bfb to bit okay so if we set this p uh, bit within a user option bytes i will show it how we can manipulate that later the 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 cpu will um, uh, so if we set this bit what will happen is that instead of bank two we instead of bank one we will have bank two and instead of bank one we will end up with bank one so what happens is that the microcontroller will swap these two memory units and then since um, by default this um, address is aliased to zero the microcontroller will start running the application within bank two and nothing is happened Bank one, but if we reset it, if we set it to zero, again uh, it will be swapped and it will be in default configuration, meaning that here we have bank one, here we have bank bank two. So the application, the the microcontroller will run the code from bank one. So what it means is that we can easily implement this uh, approach using these bank uh, uh, modes. So we will store application one within bank one, application two within bank two, and we can choose which one to run using this BFB uh, two uh, bit. So if we want to run application two, we can set uh, BFB, BFB two P, a bit. If we want to run the application within bank one, we reset this bit. And the interesting thing is that imagine that we are running a uh, bank one, nothing is happening in bank two, and the, using the function I presented, we can um, uh, store our, we can send the, our binary file through the serial port, and we can store it within the bank two. Then we set this speed, and we can swap. So the microcontroller will start running the application that we have just sent. Okay. So I hope this idea is, is clear, but of course, if you have any questions, uh, you can leave them in the, in the comments, of course. I will be happy to, to answer your questions. So let's um, continue. So um, based on this um, uh, information I, I presented, 
I created this toggle bank reset function. So here, what I what I do basically, as I said, we have option bytes, user option bytes. So to access them, I have this um, uh, struct. So here, what I want to uh, update is uh, BFB two bit. And also, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, within this header file, we have this bank address. Um, so if we go back here, so as you see, uh, this part, so so by default it's written bank two, but actually as I said, if we set this p bit, uh, this part could be either bank one or bank two, depending on this uh, uh, the value of this bit. So this part of the memory starts from this address, 8080000. So, so to store it, um, I created uh, this macro. And, and also another important thing I totally forgot to mention is that uh, we have this system configuration uh, memory remap register. And within this, we have uh, this FB mode pin. So if this, uh, bit is zero, it, man, it means that we are currently in bank one. So, uh, so bank one is mapped to this address and we are running the application within the bank one. Okay. And if this bit is one, is, it means that we are running the application in bank two. Uh, so this is the default configuration. But if we set um, this BFP to uh, bit, it will swap. And this FP mode pin will also be will be equal to one. So by reading this bit, uh, we can understand in which application we are currently running, which bank we are currently running. Uh, so here we have I just get access it, and um, and um, and the, this uh, macro uh, points to the bank that we are not running currently. So right now, if we are in bank one, if we are running the application in bank one, this bank will be uh, will correspond to bank two. So if we're running bank two, uh, uh, this bank macro will be equal to bank one. Okay. Um, so when we erase, uh, I, as I presented, uh, this bank is equal to this macro. So what it means is that we always erase the bank that we are not running. Of course, because if we are running the application, if we erase that at the same time, it will be crash. That's why we, of course, have to always erase the, the bank that we are not running right now. Okay, so next thing, um, toggle bank. Uh, so if bank is bank two, so if we want to switch uh, to bank two, so if we are currently running bank one, we have to set this bit. Otherwise, we have to disable BFB to bit. Then we have to program this user uh, option bytes. We have to restart the microcontroller. And what it does is that it. So we have bank one, bank two. It will swap. So this becomes bank two, and this becomes bank one. Or if it is bank two and the big bank one, if we swap again, uh, we have a bank bank one and bank two. So uh, I hope all these ideas are fairly clear. So we finish it covering the flash program. Um, so how to raise, how to write data within the flash memory, and the most important thing, I think, how to swap the banks. So next we will finish the serial port and we will finally try the custom bootloader.